Hey, Cool Gray. We are going to do a demonstration of an acrylic pour today, but I could not have done this, and I mean this so very literally, without the wonderful tutorial videos uh, here on YouTube from Karen Goodrich. Check the description box below. I've linked to her channel, and I can't say enough about how uh, warm and inviting and helpful her tutorials are specifically in this area of acrylic pouring So if you're interested in getting started yourself, that's definitely a place to go She's created uh, a group on Facebook for those of us who do this sort of thing to get together and uh, Support and encourage and advise one another uh, but as dead mother of that <laughs> burgeoning group um, she is the go-to person for all things acrylic pour as far as I'm concerned. So these flowers were inspired by her sunflower video and I will link to that in the description box so you can see what she advised and today here I'm going to show you my attempt kind of first time out. I did one first. I'll show you a little picture of the first one I tried that was supposed to be a sunflower but it ended up kind of being more like a lily. Uh, I've called this series that I'm doing my fire flower series just because that's what it felt like when I was doing it and by the time I got to the third one I really felt that I was sort of developing my own style and kind of finding my own voice as far as a flower series goes. So since they're getting such great comments and likes and responses on Instagram and social media elsewhere in the social sphere. I will probably do more of them, even though I did not think they were my best efforts. They really are uh, making a hit. So here's how I did it. Please come along and let me know what you think. So I'm preparing my canvas with first adding just uh, some white and uh, that's gonna go just over the edges a little bit. And to that, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of a kind of a periwinkle sky blue, just for a little variation in the background. And I'm going to use my favorite tool, which is my hand. You'll notice that in my cooking videos as well. So we've got our background prepared and I'm leaving the center now for the flower. I'm gonna start with the middle of the flower. Sunflowers are almost all middle. So we're gonna make that as big as possible. I've got my black, my purple, and just a tiny bit of one of the petal colors for some brightness in the middle there. Just gonna tilt a little bit to try to enlarge that circle, and then we're gonna break up those colors and try to make it look sort of representational of uh, the center of a sunflower. We are not going for realistic in any way here. We're making a suggestion of a flower so uh, I'm trying a couple of different techniques here, first with my palette knife and then I'm blowing a little bit to break it up. And now I'm ready to get started with some petals. So I'm taking two different colors, pouring them side by side and then just gently swirling together. I just wanna get a little bit of each color as I pour each petal. I don't want those colors to blend together. And then I'll just pour my petals and we'll begin to try to shape them with a palette knife. Once again, each petal doesn't have to be the same size. They don't need to be perfect. And now I'm just gonna use my palette knife to try to create a petal shape. Now, as I started to go here, I was feeling really good about the way this was looking when I did the first pass, but you'll notice that I'm kind of fussing a lot over each shape because I don't have a lot of experience manipulating this fluid art uh, way of uh, having so much liquid on the canvas right now. So I'm still finding my way. And at this point, I was really feeling very confident about this flower. You'll notice as we go further though, uh, I did struggle a little bit with knowing exactly when to stop. I was trying to correct a lot of things and bring some things back to where I wanted them to be, but sometimes that's not necessarily the way you want to go with fluid art. You want to just sort of let it be, even if it isn't perfect, um, because that's part of the idea of this kind of art. So uh, you go back over too many times, you try to get things to look exactly the way you have them in your head, and you may end up overworking the piece, which I do think that I did here. But not yet. At this point, I'm still super pleased, even though I've got some places where my palette knife got away from me and some of that yellow is going in places where I don't want it to go. I'm going to try to make that work to my advantage with another 
back row of petals coming up in a minute. But right now I'm trying to break up that center a little bit more. So I'm just adding some dots of colors and then just using a little uh, plastic stick that I have around. I think it's a clay tool. I'm not sure how, where I got it. Just to scramble that up a little bit and try to add a little bit of depth and a little bit of variation. And now I'm just putting that same stick in some of my black paint to outline some of these petals. You'll see that that really helps create some definition and uh, make them sort of pop. And again, at this point, I almost wish I had stopped right at this point. I'm more pleased with it at this stage than I was at the end of it. But I still think that I did a respectable job and certainly a better job than I did the first time I tried it. And I ended up with a lily. <laughs> so, you know, I love that it's a learning experience. I can go back in with my petal colors and try to cover up a couple of little mistakes here. Some of the mistakes really aren't mistakes at all. They're just art you know leave it alone let it be what it is so now I'm gonna go uh, create a little bit more of my petal colors and try to put a few in the back row to try to give the piece a little bit more depth and here's where I think the piece started to get away from me um, I almost wish that I had a canvas that was larger just because of the way my hand tends to go uh, but I do love that the petals went over the edge. But here, I think I started to overwork, uh, maybe over worry. And I'm trying to uh, manipulate those first petals a little bit more in order to make them look like they come in front of these petals. And in the process, I may have uh, let the piece get a little bit skewed and off center. But you know what? I'm not so sure that's a bad thing in the long run. So I'm mentioning these things to you uh, just so that you understand what was going on in my head while I was creating the piece, not that I'm making apologies or excuses for it. Um, I want you to understand what I was thinking of when I made some of these choices to where I was going to work next and what I was going to do. Um, but overall, I'm pleased with the process and I do want to make some more sunflowers and see if I can improve a little bit more. A little bit of camera jitter there. <laughs> Apologize for that. So now I can come back in and uh, try to reclaim some of those places that got a little bit muddy with some additional uh, petal color and then come back in with my black and reclaim some of the outlines that I want where the color has obscured some of my outline. And the whole purpose of this is for it to be kind of loose and kind of flowy and um, in no way realistic, but certainly bold and fun. And I certainly feel like I accomplished that. <laughs> and after just a couple more little touch-ups, I'm just about ready to call this finished. One of the things I love about this uh, art form is that the canvas is so wet and so uh, fluid for so long that you really do have a lot of time to think about what you want to do and uh, to be surprised. It's almost like a collaborative effort between the artist and the canvas where it will inform you and you will inform it. Uh, it's a very addictive way of making art as anybody who's part of the community will certainly tell you. So I'm calling it done overall. I'm pleased. Uh, it led me to make another series. In fact, right after I did this one, I made another flower. It was a red poppy. There's going to be another video coming up soon and it'll look like this and I will show you what happened there. This was much more my style and much less um, working with the technique that Karen showed, but certainly inspired by. So once again, thank you to Karen. If you liked this video, would you please tell me by pressing the like button. While you're at it, I would love it if you would consider subscribing if you haven't already. And while you're doing that, on the main channel page, you can click the little bell that will let you know when there are new videos. We do art videos and we do cooking videos around here. Please check both out and I will see you next time.